Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of RPG Roundup and today we will be talking about Black Crusade, the uh, last um, setting or um, game produced in the 40, Warhammer 40,000 line by Fantasy Flight Games. This was released in 2011 and as we've been going through these four, uh, Warhammer 40k uh, RPGs Traditionally, we'd say we've left the best for last. In this case, it's not quite true, but it's not without merit. So we're going to go through this game, okay, what it is, what works about it and what doesn't work about it, because it's the, it's probably the most interesting um, game of this line. However, it does have quite a few odd choices, which are worth talking about. Okay, so first of all, what is this game? So it's the another system um, in the... Warhammer 40,000 D100 um, system and for those of you who have not watched previous videos the D100 system is when you roll two separate D10s one to represent 10 so you know 10, 20, 30, 40 and one to represent the numbers within the 10 so for example you roll two if you get 8 and 4 you have 84 okay and so on and is it the high numbers or the low numbers that you're wanting you system? want lower um, than whatever your characteristic is so say you're trying to shoot someone you have a characteristic called ballistic skill um, and it will be a certain number between 1 and 100 let's say it's 50 okay you want to try and roll under 50 in order to succeed in your action with so different it's modifiers sort of the opposite of what you might expect for some systems yeah sort of the opposite depending on which system you've played before you're not trying to get a higher number you're trying to get a lower number in this case Okay, so what is a Black Crusade? Well, for those of you who know a uh, Warhammer 40k, uh, you will know that a Black Crusade are when the forces of chaos basically march upon the you know the materium, the the sort of the living galaxy, to spread the whims and worship of the chaos gods. So there are four chaos gods in total. Corn, Slanesh, Zinch, and Nurgle. Okay, and each of those gods have a certain domain that they are in charge of, and it's very important for this game. So, um, Corn is the god of murder, violence, and war. Very simple. He likes violence, he likes skulls, he likes blood, and if you follow him, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to have to fight people, okay? Anyone, doesn't matter really who, he doesn't care where the blood or the skulls come from. Um, so he is the god of violence, death, and war. Okay, Slanesh is the Prince of Pleasure and Perfection. Okay, so for him, you're going to want to, you know, become the best at anything as you do. You're going to seek pleasure, however that is, you're going to do that. Okay, Zinch is the god of psychers, so kind of like psychic powers, magic powers, sorcerers, um, planning, treachery, deceit. Okay, so if you want to follow Zinch, you will be all about, you know, your psychic powers, your sorcery, your planning, your deception, your treachery. And Nurgle is the god of decay and disease. And gross things. And gross, gross. And gross things. Um, so if you want to use poison, if you want to spread disease, if you want to become very resilient and impervious to all sort of mortal things, you would follow Papa Nurgle as he is sometimes known. So in this game, you play as a warband, a chaos warband, and your goal is to go about and spread, you know, chaos um, as, as quickly as you can. However, there is a timer. So I didn't talk about it in the previous systems, but there is what's called a corruption tracker, which goes from zero to 100. So when you start a campaign, you are at zero corruption, okay? And as things happen to you, you know, you're fighting, you're, you know, you're battling sorcerers, you touch something that's cursed, you know, by a demon, a, a warp demon, a chaos demon, you'll become corrupted over time. And in the other games, like Death Watch and Rogue Trader um, and Only War, when you reach 100 corruption, it basically means game over. You know, your character is now either too physically or mentally corrupted to continue being a player character. It's the same here, but you're actually in a race, okay, because you also have a characteristic called Infamy, which you want to raise to 100 as well. So you're racing your corruption while getting your, you know, your infamy up. However, unlike um, in the other games, you gaining corruption can actually be a bit of an advantage because you can gain, as long as the gods like you, the blessing of the gods. Okay, so you can gain sort of tentacles or you know sort of 
blade arms or whatever it is you're called. So the get arms you. here. That's it's all with the arms. Um, but you know, you'll get gifts, blessings of the, the dark gods as your character becomes more corrupted, which can be quite beneficial to you, whereas in the previous systems it was always a negative. Okay, but you're trying to race to reach 100 infamy so you can, you know, reach Apotheosis and become a demon prince yourself. Okay, so that's what you're trying to do in the campaign. So you'll go about that in a kind of sandbox fashion, or, you know, you can have kind of more structured campaigns. But before you do that, you have to make a heretic yourself. Well, how do you do that? Okay, well, it's very similar to the first, um, the first three games in terms of you selecting an archetype. Okay, but there are two different sets. Okay, you can choose to either be a Chaos Space Marine. Okay, so a, you know, a superhuman, you know, um, ma man muscle, you know, a genetically altered person. Or you can be a regular human mortal. Okay. Now, I've not spoken about this previously because in the previous games you've been sort of split between just being one or the other, but campaigns and this usually don't go well with having, you know, Space Marines and non-Space Marine characters because they're very, very different, both in lore and in gameplay as well. Because, of course, if you're playing an 8-foot tall, you know, cybernetic, biomet, you know, metic, demi-human killing machine, Okay, you're going to be a lot better at combat than the little piddly man, okay. However, you're eight foot tall, you're giant, so certain things you cannot do. You, know, you can't go into a regular human bar and pretend to be a regular human person because you're eight foot tall and you weigh about 300 kilograms and that's without you putting on your lovely armour. Okay, so you can never be a Chaos Space Marine or you can be a, well I say regular human, but it's just a mortal, okay. And there are different archetypes for those, okay? So wherever you want to be better at combat, or social situations, or making things, or psychic powers, there will be an archetype in here that fits your heretic, okay? And it's a similar system in terms of there's not ranks, there's not levels, it's based around gaining XP and then buying whatever you want from an aptitude system, okay? So that's where, you know, it's a variable amount of XP based on what it is you want to buy. All right. But unlike the other systems, there's also um, basically by following one of the gods over the others. Okay, so it's expected in Black Crusade that you will choose one of the gods to become your patron. And how do you do that is because you either buy skills or you know attributes that focus on that god, or you do things that you know they would want you to do. Oh, I've got an alarm! Terrible. We're not going to edit that out, but we should, we're not. Anyway, so you have to do things for your god, okay? So if you're wanting to be a patron of corn, you need to go out, spill blood, take skulls, all that lovely stuff, okay? If you're a patron of Slaanesh, you need to go and be perfect at things and get pleasure, whatever way you can. Zinch, you need to deceive people. And it's leave alarms and videos. Leave alarms and videos, yes. Um, I'll grow a tentacle any second. And Nurgle, you have to spread disease and pestilence and plague and salt the earth and all that sort of stuff. Think 2020. So the more, yes, think COVID. The more you do this, uh, the more the gods will favour you and that's what you're wanting to do. People can be um, different pa patrons of different gods in your group. And it is also expected as well that your the aims of your gods will sometimes not align. So you'll be in a mission, you'll be trying to do something, and you can be given by the GM a sort of submission by the god. And sometimes those missions are going to, you know, directly antagonise other players at the table, depending on which god they are also following. Now, if all this sounds like a lot, it's because it is. Now, what I would say from Black Crusade when I've played it or, or ran it is that it's probably the most chaotic. intensive, it's the most chaotic but it's also the most intensive in terms of, particularly for the, the GM, in terms of tracking that you have to do because you've got to make sure you're tracking, you know, infamy, corruption, the, the, ben, the boons of the gods, you know, what they've done towards, you know, their gods, their sort of patronage, what actions have they taken, because you can also lose, um, you know, your gods' favour. So, for example, 
Corn hates all psychers, uh, hates all sorcerers. So anything like that. If your player suddenly is being following Corn and decides they want to become a psyker, Corn no longer favours them because he hates them. Okay, so it's a lot to think of. You you have to keep track of um, both as a game master and a player. But that's not to say it's bad. It's just very hard. Also, compared to the other games, I feel that it tends to lose focus because there's so much going on, it's like spinning plates where people will eventually kind of lose the point because while there is a goal of trying to become a demon prince, it, it can feel aimless at times because it's not like Death Watch where you have a mission or Only War where you're fighting a war as the guard or Rogue Trader where you're, you know, you're trying to get yourself profit and money. Um, this can sometimes feel a little, uh, you know, just a little aimless, but it can be good fun. I would also say if you have players who do not like to, you know, be in opposition to one another, you know, maybe stay clear of this. Well, it's not player versus player. There can be times where, you know, they're in somewhat opposition to one another. And I would say that can, uh, that can also be a negative. But if you have ever been interested in the chaos side of things in uh, Warhammer 40k, I would definitely say that this is worth a try. Um, I would also say as well it's the least supported of any of the um, Fantasy Flight games Warhammer 40k systems and that there's not a lot of source books for it. I think they only did one per god. So there's four source books and then I think there was maybe one or two adventures. But apart from that, you know, there wasn't a lot of support for it before Fantasy Flight Games lost the license. So you may, but there will be of course fan, um, you know, fan creations. But even I think with fan creations, this is the least supported um, system. It's kind of a red-headed stepchild. Not bad, but it is a little odd. But if this, you look at this, you know, you, 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 you see it, it looks very heavy metal. You think it looks cool. Not everyone will. It's not to everyone's taste. Which is odd because it looks pretty cool. It does look pretty cool. Um, but if you look at this or if you look at the description at the start, so I'll just read it out because I like doing that with these. Uh, embrace the power of chaos. He's left the classroom but he's still yes. lecturing away. Still lecturing away. Okay, to finish off. Okay. To do it. Forget the promise of progress and understanding, for in the grim, dark future there is only war. There is no peace amongst the stars, only an eternity of carnage and slaughter and the laughter of thirsting gods. Yet there are those who rise above the teeming masses, rejecting the conformity and servility of mankind. The ignorant call them traitors, heretics, lost and damned, but they know themselves as the disciples of the dark gods. So if that sounds interesting to you and you would like to try it, I would definitely recommend to you uh, Black Crusade. It's not a game I'd recommend to everyone, but it is fun. Give it a shot. Do you think more for a one-shot then? I think it could be good for a one-shot rather than a full campaign. Um, especially if you choose a later point in terms of character progression, you could give it maybe like a, a, short, a short adventure, a short campaign rather than a longer term one. Um, I would definitely suggest that. But give it a shot, let us know how you feel about it in the comments and have fun, have a great day. Bye.